We are going to look at one verse of scripture today. Just one verse of scripture. But we see this guy by the name of Joshua. Biggest shocker probably ever. And, he, and he's, he's been conquering all this land. He's been taking dominion. He's been winning all of these battles. Been doing all this amazing, amazing stuff. And in the verses before this one, it talks about all of the kings that he has conquered and all of the land that he has helped the Israelites to inherit. But now, he gets to this point where God speaks to him. And you would think that when God speaks, that God is going to say, awesome job. Amazing job. Well done, Joshua. High five. You know, go live the dream. Go live it up. But God doesn't say any of that. God says in, in Joshua chapter number 13 and verse 1, it says, When Joshua had grown old, the Lord said to him, You are now very old. Wow. Thanks, God. Of all the words you could have given me, this is the last one I needed, right? Joshua's probably thinking like, as if I didn't already know that every morning when I get out of bed and my hip pops, right? Just to like get out of the bed. Like I already knew that I was old. I have a friend and, and on Instagram last week he posted something about how he was turning 25 and he was getting old. Which used to be me, I'm not going to lie to you, but it's not anymore. And, and so I messaged him and I was like, listen, I was like, I'm turning 30 this year. So please don't talk about you're turning 25, you're getting old, right? Like if you're 25 and old, what does that make me? He messaged me back, had the audacity to say, dude, you're ancient. <laughs> what? Like this is when I wish Instagram had a slap feature, right? Where you could press the button and their phone would fly out of their hand and slap them in the face when they read the message. Because I was like, you just don't, so, so you don't say that to people. You don't tell people they're old. You don't tell people that they're getting old, but God's like, Joshua, you are now very old. And, he says, there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. Amen. See, God is pretty savage here. He says, hey, hey, Joshua, you're an old man. You're an old guy, right? You are old. God says something that, that if he said it to some of us, we'd be like, you know what, I don't like your tone. But God says, Joshua, you're very old. But there are still large areas of land to be taken. God told him himself, he said, you're old. Now the fact that God said it means that it's true because God cannot lie. You ever had somebody say something to you and it wasn't a good thing, but you didn't have any argument back because it was true? You ever had somebody say something to you and it kind of hurt your feelings a little bit, but you couldn't even say anything back because what they said was true? They, they told you some things about your life and you didn't like it, but it was true? And what happens so often is, is we begin to, to disqualify those things. We begin to say that those things cause us not to be able to do what we've been called to do or sometimes we pretend that they don't exist because it hurt our feelings right like I don't like what you said so I'm not gonna apply it to my life but just because the truth hurts does not mean that it's not still true sometimes the truth hurts but it's just as true as it was if it didn't hurt God said Joshua you are old and for most people they would have viewed that as something that disqualified Joshua from being able to be used by God they would have told Joshua, the fact that you are old disqualifies you from being able to go into battle. But God looked at Joshua and he said, Joshua, you're old, but there are still large areas of land to be taken over. And what I know is that all of us have things in our lives that people tell us disqualify us. It's not just our age. All of us have things in our lives, are faced with things that are facts that are true about us that most would tell us disqualify us from seeing anything great, from being able to live a victorious life. And the sad thing is, most of the time, we believe them. You're too old. You're too young. 
You're too inexperienced. You're even too experienced. You're not married. You are married. You don't have kids. You do have kids. You didn't go to school. You did go to school. We have all these things that people will say are a disqualification. And a lot of times we believe them and they tell us that because of these things that disqualify us, that it is over for us. But what I believe God wants you to know today is it's not over yet. It's not over yet. The, that's, that's the title of my message today if you want to write that down. It's not over yet. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for today and I just thank you that we have the opportunity to come before you in this place. But we thank you for those who have gathered with us today in house and online to hear your word. And I pray that you would help each and every person not to see and to hear from me, Lord. I pray that you would help us to all see and hear from you. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to take what is spoken and apply it to our lives. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Now, I don't know how many of you guys work in retail. Okay, If you work in retail, I just need to tell you this. I pray for you daily. Daily. Whenever I can think about it, I pray for anybody who works in retail. Because it amazes me how people are so rude and mean to people that work in retail. It, it blows my mind. I, I cannot even fathom the way that some people treat others that work in retail. Like... You're just an employee doing your job, and they treat you like you're the boss that made the rules. And a couple of weeks ago, I was in this place, and I was shopping, and I sat and listened for five minutes to somebody yelling at this employee because their credit card machine was down. Now, it inconvenienced me, too. I had to go to the bank because I don't carry cash. It's my secret. If I ever get robbed, they can take my credit card, then I can call and cancel them. They take my cash, I'm done for, right? So I don't carry cash because I'm not throwing up much of a fight. So I, I had to go and get cash. It was inconvenient to me as well. But this person is tearing into the employee. You know, I can't believe in 2019 that you would allow your credit card machine to go down. I can't believe that you're having this kind of trouble. What kind of establishment are you running? And I wanted to interject for the employee and say, Actually, I'm not running this establishment. I just work here. So I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I'm not in the tech field, right? But it's amazing that people can just be so rude for no reason. And, and so I, I, feel, I feel for you all the time because you work, you work with, with people, right? It's kind of like church. So, so I feel for you, right? You love people, but people are people. Saved people are still people. Church going people are still people. So I feel for you. I pray for you. And I try to keep in mind as much as possible what you go through. And, and, and I try when I go to shop anywhere to keep that in mind and to be nice. But I got to admit, a couple of weeks ago, I almost forgot for a moment. I had to remind myself. Because the employee who was just doing their job, just doing their job. They told me something that I did not like because it messed with my wallet. And I, don't, I, don't, I didn't like it, even though they were just doing their job. So I had to remind myself because I went into this place, my favorite store, and I've been waiting on this pair of jeans to go on sale. Waiting, right? Because I have to have special kinds of jeans. Stop looking at my jeans. I'm feeling insecure right now. I have to wear special kind of jeans, right? Like I need them to be skinny, but I also need to be able to move in them, you know? And I want to look good for my wife. So I have all these like different parameters for my jeans. And I've been waiting on these jeans to go on sale. They have not gone on sale yet. I'm at my favorite store. I walk in and I look at the sale rack and it's like a light shone down from heaven on the sale rack and there's one pair of jeans and it's the jeans I've been waiting to go on sale. And I go over, they only have one pair. And I go over, and it's my size. Hallelujah. Divine moment right there. So I grabbed them, I'm all excited. And the sale rack said $10. He's a good man. You know, he's good. God is good all the time. He sees you through. You may have to wait, but weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. 
$10. These things are normally 50 bucks. So I go and I get these $10 jeans. Now, if my grandmother was here, she'd tell me, if you would pay $50 for your jeans, and maybe you could get some that didn't have holes in them. But anyways, I, I, I get these jeans, and I go to check out. I get up to the register, and I'm beaming, man. I'm like, he's like, how you doing today? Man, I'm good. Woo! How you doing? You know, Cole's like, calm down. It's okay. So I give him the jeans, and I'm expecting him to say $10, right? He says, that'll be $40. <laughs> the devil is a lie. I'm not saying you are the devil, but what you just said, you allowed him to use you, right? Because I said, oh, no, no, they're on sale. He said, they may be on sale, but they're, they're $40. And I said, but, but the, the, the thing back there, it says $10. He said, no, sir, if you, if you look closely, it says starting at $10. <laughs> and what I wanted to say, because I mean, I had to, I had to literally, because I'm like, hold on a moment. I went back and looked at it myself, and it's big $10, and then in little print right above it, it says starting at. So I wanted to go back to him and say, listen, dude. They're on the $10 rack. 10 is bigger than starting that. I'm going with what I can see. So you good customer service would be to give me these jeans for $10. But I didn't do that because one of our members is a manager at this store. And I know for a fact she watches the surveillance cameras because she's come and greeted us one time when we walked in. So I held my cool. But he said, I'm so, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry that, you know, they're just, they're, they don't qualify for the $10. That's just the T-shirts. The jeans only qualify for $40. And you see here on the label it says, we have a sticker there, $40. I'm like, fine, you know. He's like, so you still want the jeans? Man, no, I'm not paying $40 for no jeans. I'd go put them back for you. You go put them back yourself. I'm just kidding. Kind of. But anyways... I don't remember if I put them back or not. I'm just, that's what I'm going to go with. I don't remember. Maybe I put them back. Maybe I lived out what I should. But, but I, I showed him the jeans, and I'm expecting them to be one thing. And he said, sir, those do not qualify for the $10 sale. They don't qualify. They, they, they were unqualified for that sale. And what I know is that a lot of us have felt unqualified because we've been labeled by people or situations. A lot of us feel unqualified because of the way that we've been labeled. A lot of us feel disqualified because of the way that we've been labeled. A lot of us feel as if we could have done what God called us to do, but because we've been labeled with something in our life that maybe somebody put on us or we put on ourselves, that we are disqualified from being used. But what I need you to know is that with God, you are never disqualified. You are never disqualified. It's the first thing I need you to see today. You're never disqualified. He said in verse 1, when Joshua had grown old, the Lord said to him, the Lord said to him, the Lord said to him, his friends didn't say to him, his family didn't say to him, his enemies didn't say to him, the Lord said to him, when the Lord speaks, nothing else matters. When he calls you, nothing else matters. When he qualifies you, nothing else matters. And too many of us have been counting ourselves out because we feel disqualified. But if it was no longer for you, then God would not have called you. Now I get it. You know, some of you are like, well, yeah, that may be true, may have been true, but, but that can't be true for me. There's no way that God can do anything great in my life because I've messed up too much. I've made too many wrong decisions. I've made too many wrong choices. I've done too many wrong things. Sure, that may have been true when I was younger, Dustin, but, but now there's no way that it's true. It might have been true before the divorce. It might have been true before I had a child. It might have been true before I experienced financial bankruptcy. It might have been true before I got old. It might have been true before I lost my job. It might have been true before all these things. But there's no way that it's true now. But hear me on this. 
Where God finds you and where God meets you is not where he's taking you. And you may not be where you think you need to be in order to see everything God has called you to do, but that does not mean that God cannot still get you there. Just because you're not at the place where you think that you need to be does not mean that God's love cannot still pick you up and use you to get you exactly where you are supposed to be to do exactly what he has called you to do. You are not disqualified. People might tell you that you're disqualified. You might feel disqualified. You might even look disqualified. But if God called you to it, God said you are not disqualified. You're not disqualified. Nothing in your life has the power to disqualify you. Nothing in your life has the power to stop you. Now what happens is a lot of times we stop ourselves. Because we disqualify ourselves. A lot of times we allow what people say about us or we even allow what we feel about ourselves. Because the truth is, there's people, most people don't know everything about you. I don't know if it's okay to say this, but look to your left. Look to your right. The person sitting on each side of you is probably a little bit different when they're not at church. (laughs) You see them on the road, and you cut them off, they might be a little bit different. And what happens is we end up disqualifying ourselves just because of of what even just what, what we know, what even other people don't know. See, where the enemy most tries to shame you is the area that God most wants to use you. The area that the enemy tries to tell you, look at what you did, look at what you've been through, look at what you experienced. Don't you remember when you made that mistake? Don't you remember when you made that wrong decision? Don't you remember all this stuff? That the, the place that the enemy tries to shame you is the area that God most wants to use you. Did you ever stop to think that the thing in your life that you view as a disqualification is actually what qualifies you? If you hadn't gone through the divorce, how are you ever going to help somebody else who's going through it? If you had not experienced the pain of trying to overcome an addiction, if you had not been an addict at some point in your life, how would you help somebody else who's trying to overcome an addiction? If you had not reached an age of maturity in your life, how would you ever have the wisdom that you need to do what God has created you to do? If you hadn't reached this point in your life, how would you ever be able to help invest in the next generation? If you had not gone through what you went through, I don't know about you, but I look at what I went through when I counted a blessing. I look at my mistakes and I counted a blessing because I made it through and I'm able to use what I went through in order to do what God's called me to do. Because if I hadn't gone through it, I wouldn't be able to share about it. If I hadn't experienced the pain, I wouldn't be able to share about it. So the enemy tries to shame us in the area that God most wants to use us. And try to tell us that we cannot do it. But when we begin to think that we cannot do what God has called us to do because of what we've done, it reveals that we really don't think that he's that powerful. God, there's no way that your grace could could overcome what I've done. There's no, God, do you know how dysfunctional my family was? There's no way that you can overcome that. There's no way that you can, that you can make it through that. But there is nothing that you have done that you are doing or that you will do that will be too great for God to overcome. There is nothing in your life that you've experienced, that you're experiencing today or that you will experience that would make God say, I can no longer use you to do what I've created you to do. But we look at it and and we say, you know what? All that's good for everybody else. Some of us even here this morning are sitting there thinking over all the things that make this not true for you. I don't know that we'd ever say that, but in our mind, it's like, man, yeah, that's, that's good preaching right there. But then tomorrow morning, when you wake up, 
It's going to be, oh, man. God, there's no way. I don't even know how to get through today. God said, I wouldn't have called you to it if I wasn't able to empower you through it. I wouldn't have called you to it if I wasn't able to help you get through this thing. I, I, I would not have allowed you to go through what you've gone through if it was going to be enough to take you out. I wouldn't have let you experience that if it was going to be enough to take you out. God said, the thing in your life that you feel disqualifies you is the very thing that God's going to use to qualify you. Some of us have impatience, and we think because we're so impatient that we can't see anything great. But God says the fact that you're impatient is what I'm going to be able to use to help you teach others because I'm going to get you through this thing. Stop relying on yourself. When we feel like we can't do it, it's because we cannot do it. We can't do it ourselves. So just because you're impatient doesn't mean you have to stay impatient. You can lean on God, make it through that thing, and then begin to help others see that you can make it through the same thing I'm in, I went through. Because if I can, let me tell you something, man. You think your life's messed up? Ain't nobody had a life as messed up as mine. You think that you're too far from God? Nobody's been as far from God as I have. Let me tell you how you can make it back through. Let me tell you how good God is. Let me tell you where he found me. But he loved me too much to leave me where he found me. And look at now where he's brought me. You're coming to me for advice. I was looking for somebody else to get advice from. That's how good God is. God is. God, God is so good that he will take the thing that you needed help with and use you to help somebody else. It's not a disqualification. It's not a disqualification. God said, God said, I can do it in your life. I can use you. I can do what it is I've called you to do. I will not speak for everybody in this room, but I know that for myself, I have given God a million reasons not to love me and not to use me, but none of them have changed his mind. Yeah. Given him time and time again where I didn't get it right, where I messed up, where I made the wrong decision, and none of those have changed his mind and said, oh, I can't use Dustin anymore. I can't let Dustin walk in his calling anymore. If anything, God has said, you see what you learned here? Now go use it to help other people. Because nothing is too great. Nothing disqualifies us. When Joshua had grown old, the Lord spoke to him. When, when most people would have told Joshua, it's time to hang it up. Been at this a long time, man. You've done a great job. But you're disqualified now. You're disqualified. You can't do it. When most people would have said that, God spoke to Joshua. And, and hear me, those of you who feel like, like you're too too far gone, like your best days are gone, like your best days are over. We need you now more than ever. And the enemy's favorite thing is to get you to believe that nobody wants to hear what you have to say, but that's exactly what we need. We need to hear the wisdom. We need to hear the guidance. We need to hear what you know. We need it invested in our heart. Don't run from the next generation. Invest in the next generation. Don't, don't shun the next generation. Invest in the next generation. Say, this is what God showed me in my life. But when everybody would have told Joshua, like, it's over. Wrap it up. It's done. You're done. Put a bow on it. You're finished. God spoke to Joshua. And the fact that God spoke to Joshua meant that he called Joshua. And the fact that he called Joshua meant that he qualified Joshua. He qualified him. We love to say this in church. We love to say God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Love to say this. And it is so true. 100% true. But we say this, but then we don't apply it to our own lives. We say that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. But then we don't apply it to our own lives. And we feel like we are disqualified. We feel like that's true for you, but it's not true for me and all of my stuff. It's true for you, but there's no way that God can actually still use me. There's no way that God can still do amazing things in my life. There's no way. I'm, I'm too dysfunctional. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm, I'm, I'm too messed up. I've made too many wrong choices, and we disqualify ourselves 
but we tell everyone else that they're qualified. But that truth remains for everyone. That truth does not change. God qualifies the called. God qualifies the called. And as a child of God, you are called. Which means that even though on paper you may look disqualified, God says, no, I'm vouching for this person. They are qualified. Had somebody the other day, that I got an email that they needed a reference for something. They needed a secondary reference because they were being told that they were not qualified to do what they were supposed to be doing. So I filled out the reference. I put all the biggest words that I possibly could because I know this person. And I told them, I, I said, I believe in you and I know that you can do it. I don't know what they saw. I don't know why they saw what they saw. But I've actually seen the truth. And so I vouched for that person on a second reference, and they got the job. Why? Not because they thought they were qualified, but because somebody else stepped in and says they are qualified. And that's exactly what God does whenever the enemy starts trying to tell us that we're not good enough and that we can't make it and that we can't do it. God steps in, and he stands up, and he says, no, they are good enough. They are qualified. I will vouch for them. Because when I vouch for them, that means that I have to back it up. When I vouch for them, it means that if something goes crazy, that's on me. We're living our life trying to do what we can do instead of doing what God has really created us to do. And it's no wonder that we're under so much pressure, that we're carrying it so heavy. We got to get to the point where we're doing things that can only be done through him so that it all falls back on him. We do our part and then God steps in and does the rest. We handle what we can handle and then God steps in and says, whatever you can do, I've got it. I've got you covered. I've got you covered. And you can do it. He, he told Joshua, he said, you are old. You are very old. But there's still land to be taken over. Do we give ourselves too much credit? We give ourselves too much credit as if we are powerful enough to undo what God has done. And, and I think that part of the reason that we, we struggle with this so much and the reason that we have a problem believing that we're never disqualified is because sometimes we look at what people say, what the enemy says, what, what we've said about ourselves, and we have to look at it and say, it's true. It's true. It's the next thing I need you to see. It's true. All the things that everybody's saying, it's true. Because he said, you are now very old. You ever been there before? You ever had a time where somebody said something to you and you were upset, but then you looked at it and you were like, I can't even say anything about it because it's true? Like, Dustin, your wife is stronger than you. Oh, yeah, well, dang, you're right. <laughs> no comeback. I mean, what do I even say to that? It's true. God said, Joshua, you are now very old. And it was true. It was true. But notice he did not say, Joshua, you are too old. He said, Joshua, you're very old. But he didn't say that you are too old. Because as long as you still have breath in your lungs, you are never too anything. As long as you have breath in your lungs, as long as you're breathing, you are never too anything. I may be old, but I'm not too old. I may be young, but I'm not too young. I may be dysfunctional, but I'm not too dysfunctional. I may have messed up, but I'm not too messed up. I may have issues, but I don't have too many issues because God can still use me. God can still use me. I was not called because of what I've done or what I haven't done. I wasn't called because of who I am. I was called because of whose I am. And that's all that matters. You are never to anything. Stop letting people tell you that you're, you're past your prime. You're too old. Stop letting people tell you that you haven't made it yet. You're too young. Stop letting people tell you that you don't have the right experience, the right education, that you're not smart. You're, you're not to anything. You are never disqualified, even though it may be true. It may be true. It, it may be so true. I remember some, one time somebody told me, they said that I was 
Nothing more than a motivational speaker. And you know what? That hurt my feelings at first. Because I'm like, no, I want to be a preacher. I want to be a preacher, man. Don't call me a motivational speaker. But then I began to look at it a different way, and I began to see what should a pastor be doing other than motivating God's house to go out and live the life that he's created them to live. Stop looking at what others are saying about you in a negative light and start to use it and look at it the way that God intended for it to be used. I'll stand up here and motivate all day if it means that we're going to get in God's word and go out and live the life that he has called us to live. I'll stand up here and you can call me whatever. You can call me a shrimp. I don't care. But I'm going to get up here and do what God's called me to do no matter what anybody says. No matter what anybody says. We... We look at what people say with the wrong mindset. We look at it in a negative light. Because somebody says something, we begin to think that we, we can't draw close to God. When we should look at it in the different way, how much more so we need God. How much more so we need to get closer to him so that we can actually do what we've been called to do. The things that people say are not a reason to push away from God. It's a reason to come closer. So that you can truly see what he has for your life. So you can truly see what he's wanting to do. Because it's not about us. It's not about what we can do. It's not about our strengths. It's about God working in us. And until someone proves to me that God is not able, I will never stop believing that I am able. And nobody's ever going to prove to me God's not able. But until that happens, I will never stop believing that God is not, that, that, that I am able. As long as God is able. And he's always going to be able. You can give me a list of disqualifications in my life all that you want to. All day long. And trust me, there's a lot. There's so many. Just give them. Bam, 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 bam. It's not going to change my mind. It's not going to change my mind. Because I'm not doing what I'm doing on my own strength. And it's not about who I am. It's not about my qualifications. It's about his qualifications. It's about who God is. It's about who he is in my life. What he is doing through my life. So you can hit me with all the disqualifications that you want to. And you can tell me this and this and this and that and that and that. You ever had somebody, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. It does not matter. It does not matter. Because I'm not trying to live out of who I've been qualified to be. I'm living out of who God is through me. I'm never disqualified. As long as I'm living through him, I'm never disqualified. As long as I'm living out of the life that God is working through me, I'm never disqualified. Tell somebody, I'm never disqualified. I'm never disqualified. I'm never, disqualified. never disqualified. No matter what it looks like, no matter what you go through. Never disqualified. God told Joshua, he said, you are now very old. And, and God did not speak to Joshua in chapter 13, verse 1, because he was the perfect age. I mean, have you thought about, like, like God's not looking at a calendar and counting down the time until he can't use somebody anymore. He called Joshua because there was still unfinished business. There was still unfinished business. It's so the last thing I need you to see is said in verse 1. When he had grown old, the Lord said to him, you are now very old. And there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. You're old, but there is still work to be done. You still have a purpose. You still have a calling. You still have a plan. You still have unfinished business. The enemy would love to get you to think that you're all washed up. He would love to get you to think that it's over for you, that God cannot use you, that you are done, that you might as well quit, that you might as well stop, that it's done. But God said there is still work to be done. And as long as there is still work to be done, you still have a purpose. As long as there is still work to be done, you still have a plan. God still has a calling on your life. Because it's not just for your family to do. It's not just for your children to do. It's not just for your church to do. It is for you to play a role in. God said there is still large areas of land 
to be taken over. It's not over for you. My favorite golfer of all time is Tiger Woods. Favorite golfer of all time. Matter of fact, when he was struggling for all those years, I really didn't watch a whole lot of golf because he's just so fun to watch. Favorite golfer, hands down. And you might know this, you might not, if you live under a rock, but he recently won the Masters. He won the Masters for the first time since I was still taking a bottle. That's how I feel. 5,117 days translates into 14 years. 14 years since Tiger Woods won his last Master. They're calling it the greatest comeback in the history of sports. Greatest comeback. It was so cool to watch. But he had all these things. He had injuries. He had, he had things that plagued him. He had all these struggles that he went through and, and, and all these personal things. He went through all this stuff. And everybody was talking about how it was over for him. Everybody said that his best days were done. That he was finished. But then, all of a sudden after he won the Masters, everybody started talking about how it was the greatest comeback in the history. The same people that said that he was done and he needed to hang it up are the same people that were talking about his comeback. And I want us to watch this video real quick. Can Tiger Woods compete with the Justin Thomases, Jordan Spieths, Dustin Johnsons? No, is the short answer. I mean, Trey gets this question a lot. Do you think he'll return his previous form? No. Do you think he stands a chance of being the Tiger Woods we once knew? No. No, no, no. Here's what's going to happen. He is not ever going to win another tournament. I don't think we'll ever see Tiger Woods win the golf tournaments again. He's showing up at these tournaments uh, pretty much knowing that he's, he's not going to be there. The short game is gone. His health is gone. The next press release Tiger Woods should release should be I'm retiring. I have considered him now for the last five, six years a former golfer. Your wasp, just give up while you're ahead. Retire with some dignity. Tiger Woods that we all knew. He will never, ever be that guy again. Many doubted we'd ever see it. But here it is. The return to glory. The return to glory. I love that. The return to glory. See, in the first clip, everybody was talking about how he was done. Everybody said that it was over, that there was no point in him even competing anymore. Why is he even showing up? Why even show up to the tournament that you're guaranteed to lose? In the second video, they had to talk about the comeback. Imagine if Tiger would have listened to what they said and quit. Imagine if Tiger would have heard all the doubters, all the naysayers, everyone tell him the disqualifications, his knee's bad, he doesn't have the short game anymore, he does, can't drive the ball like he used to could drive it, he's going to have to completely retweak his game, he can't do what he once did. Imagine if he would have heard all of that and quit. He would have never had the comeback. Imagine if he would have tell them, tell, heard them tell him, don't show up anymore. And he would have listened to them. He never would have had the comeback. And some of us have had some people say some things about us and tell us why we cannot do it. And tell us why we'll never make it. And tell us that we might as well not even show up. That we're past that point in our lives. But God wants you to know it's not too late. It is not over yet it is not over yet it might look like it's over you might feel like it's over it might even naturally be over but if God is intervening in your life he wants you to know that it's not over yet it's not over yet stand all over this place 
It's not over yet. It feels like it's over, but it's not over yet. The next time somebody tells you not to show up, show up anyways. The next time somebody tells you not to even try, try anyways. The next time somebody tells you that you might as well quit, do it anyways, because it's not over yet. It's not over yet. 